On a picturesque night in Fort Myers, Florida, the high school baseball dreams of one of two teams will come true. As tonight, it's the Class 4A state championship game between the Colts of North Marion High School and the Eagles of North Broward Prep. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Hammond Stadium at the CenturyLink Sports Complex in Fort Myers, Florida. I'm Ryan Murphy, joined tonight by Thomas Benedetto. As tonight, North Marion, North Broward Prep decide a state champion as let's take you through the lineups that will decide tonight's state championship beginning with the visiting team on the scoreboard. They are the North Marion Colts fresh off their no hitter last night. Here's how their lineup looks. Gavin Miller hits in the leadoff spot. The Ave, Com Ave Maria committee, Eli Garcia bats second. Derek Fabian, the Florida commit, hits third. Jacob Walton, fourth. Wyatt Campbell, fifth, fresh off his gem last night. Cooper Jones, sixth. Nate Fenewald, seventh. Connor Burks, eighth. And Donnie Salguero in the nine hole for North Marion. Here's your defensive arrangement for the North Broward Prep Eagles, similar to what we saw last night. Clancy Marsh is in left. Ty Richmond, center. Riley left, right. Gian DeCastro, third. Jonah Diaz at short. Kobe Benson, second. Josh Steidel at first. And Dylan Runsdorf is behind the plate for the starter. This afternoon, this evening, for North Broward, it's Jacob Gomberg, the Florida commit. As a sophomore, gets the baseball for North Broward in the state championship game as we prepare for first pitch time here at Fort at Hammond Stadium in Fort Myers as we, as we have told you all tournament long. Bring you this first pitch brought to you by Tony Sachery's famous Creole Cuisine. They have been our first pitch sponsor throughout this FHSAA State Final Four. They sponsor this first pitch as we are ready for baseball. Ryan Murphy, Thomas Benedetto, ready to crown a 4A champion. Gavin Miller leads things off for North Marion. He was 0 for 3 with a couple of strikeouts in the 4-1 win yesterday for North Marion. And he takes a first pitch low for a ball from the starter of the Florida commit, Jacob Gomberg. One ball, no strikes the count from the left-hander as Gomberg from the windup deals his 1-0 pitch. It is upstairs for a ball, and the leadoff hitter in Gavin Miller has started the head, two balls and no strikes. Gomberg, a big strikeout pitcher. 55 strikeouts in just 28 innings pitch. You saw his stats early on, and uh, control has gotten him into trouble. I mean, he's definitely got the stuff to strike out the side any inning kind of thing. And uh, the, big, the big thing is for him is can, can you find the strike zone and, and quickly falling behind 3-0 to the leadoff man here. And the 3-0 is high and inside, ball four. So the North Marion Colts start the game with some energy as a four-pitch walk drawn by Gavin Miller as it brings up the NAIA bound, the Ave Maria Jirene commit. In Eli Garcia. Garcia last night was one for three, reach base twice for North Marion, this is the second time via a walk as well as a single. All seven hits last night for North Marion were singles in their 4 1 win as the fifth pitch of the game. Just like the first four out of the zone for ball one, it's 1 0 on Eli Garcia. North Broward Prep had to come back from a 5-0 deficit last night. As a pickoff throw to first, not in time to get the returning runner in Gavin Miller. Eli Garcia, one for three yesterday, did reach on a walk as well. Uh, we did see him try and square around in the fourth to lead off that inning, trying to bunt for a hit. It was unsuccessful, but uh, with a runner on first guy that can handle the bat, going against power arm... Something you might consider, but after seeing the first five pitch of the ball game go for balls, uh, you might not be so inclined to give up and out so so quick here. The sixth pitch of the of the appearance for Gomberg is in the zone for a strike as the count evens up at one and one. 
One ball, one strike from the lefty. Left-hander able to keep the runner pretty close as the 1-1 upstairs for a ball. As the pitching issues of Gomberg, his control have reared their ugly head early as he has put six of his first seven out of the zone. As mentioned earlier, that has been the knock on Gomberg as he has walked 39 batters in 28 and two-thirds innings. If he's in the zone, he's tough to hit as the 2-1 is going to get away. That's going to roll into shallow right center, digging around second and staying will be Gavin Miller as the throw will one hop towards third early in the game. As the old baseball adage says, you don't want to make the first or third out at third. He decides, you know what? This guy ain't throwing any strikes. Let's not take any chances. Yeah, he was he was aggressively thinking about it. He was sprinting all the way down there and uh, – Miller makes a hard turn at second, and he was certainly thinking about it, but exactly what you just said, you, you just in the back of your mind, you you got to be 100% sure, and uh, you don't want to make that first or last out there. And, uh, although I think he would have made it, uh, hard, hard to blame him because that, that plays behind you. It's, it's really, really tough, and you're not 100% sure how strong the arm is either. I would put it this way, if you think you're going to make it, you stay. If you know you're going to make it, then you would take off. But if you have any doubt in your mind, it's better to stay at second. The 2-1 pitch upstairs, ball three. It's three and one. And we've talked about it all week long with these state championship games. That panic button is a little bit quicker in these title games because you've got nothing to save. Every arm in your arsenal is available. We're not advocating taking Gomberg out yet, but... Hmm. If he continues to struggle with his control, North Broward might not wait very long as the 3-1 is back to the screen 3-2. Yep, excellent points. And again, just a seven-inning ball game. So just all the more important, of course, they play seven-inning games all year, but to get on the board early and you just don't have as long to see if a, a pitcher can kind of figure it out. Time call. If I had to guess, and just want to double check my uh, work here on this. Three balls, two strikes the count. We'll get back to that point in a moment. As the 3 2 from Gomberg. High and inside, ball four. And the Ave Maria commit has drawn a free pass. It's first and second, nobody out. And now you deal with one of the best power hitters, one of the best hitters, period, in the state of Florida, and that's Derek Fabing in the UF commit. Yes, sir. 13 home runs on the season, 21 extra base hits, and slugging, I believe, over 1,000. He stands in the right-hand batter's box. First and second, nobody out for North Marion. They come low and inside for a ball. Runner will dig for third. Throw to third is not in time. Great read by Gavin Miller. Saw that ball in the dirt and got up to third. And it's runners at the corners with nobody out for North Marion. You said it. Excellent read on the bases by Gavin Miller. And she's that ball kind of. Just it does that ball doesn't get too far away from Runstorf, just kinda gets out of his glove a little bit and he's got that whole play in front of him, gets a good secondary off second base and uh, doesn't hesitate. Now runner at third base, nobody out. We'll see if Garcia tries to get in motion as well with runners at first and third as some cheers from the North Marion fans and Ready to go is the left-hander, Gomberg. He's behind a ball and no strikes. No movement, the throw. In there on the outer half for a strike. It's even at one and one. North Broward has three guys that have thrown more than 10 innings on the year, thrown more than 15. That could come out of the bullpen. One of them is in the field. That's Riley Luft. The other two are Jensen Secular as well as Dylan Radke. 1-1 one, one is upstairs for a ball, 2-1. And, and if you walk the bases loaded here, I think you at least start to think, hey, do we need to get somebody up in the bullpen just in case he can't fight out of this? If 
The control just is not there today. You probably want to make that move pretty quickly to not let the Colts get a big run. A yeah. big inning, that is. Yeah, it's a, it's a good point. I mean, of course, he, he, we saw him walk the leadoff batter on four pitches, and second batter, he went full count, so he seemed to key in a little bit more there. Sky high pop up right side. Catch will be made by Riley Luff. They will not test his arm. The throw was pretty good. It wasn't directly on line, but it was close enough. Staying at third base is Gavin Miller, so the dangerous Derek Fabian still gets the encouragement from his teammates, but he can't get the run in as now a double play ball could get North Broward out of trouble as the bases have runners at the corners now, one out for the cleanup hitter, the designated hitter, Jacob Walton. North Broward and Gomberg right there. Uh, that's that's a big time, big time out in this ball game. I know we're early on, but you're talking about the poten potentially the offensive <laughs> MVP in the state of Florida up with runners at the corners, nobody out in the first, and and you get a a shallow fly ball that no runner is able to advance. Uh, that's a, an at bat that you get the feeling we're going to be talking about and and keep it in the back of our minds as this game goes goes deep. Three straight one-run wins in the regionals, and last night was the fifth consecutive one-run win for North Broward Prep. They have gotten here to the state championship game trying to wiggle out of trouble, but Gomberg's first two pitches to Jacob Walton have missed the zone. At first base is Eli Garcia. At third is Gavin Miller. We'll see. They try to put Garcia in motion against the lefty. They will not on that pitch. That throw over to first, not in time. Over to last night's hero in Josh Steidel. He had that walk-off double in the bottom of the ninth inning. That sent North Broward to tonight for the first time in school history. North Marion's here for the first time as well. Two balls, no strikes. The 2-0 pitch is in the dirt again. Ball three. It's 3-0. Waiting on deck is yesterday's player of the game for North Marion, the guy that threw the first six and two-thirds of that combined no-hitter, Wyatt Campbell. He'd love to hit here at the bases loaded and one out against his counterpart, Jacob Gomberg, who has just not had control today. Yeah, he had 39 walks in the 28 innings during the year, so averaging over a walk an inning, control's definitely been his Achilles heel this year. And he has walked the bases loaded. Three walks and a fly out here in the first inning. And North Broward Prep, remember they made a move to the bullpen earlier than I think people expected them to yesterday after Dunedin had hung nine runs, nine hits that is, on the board. And... North Broward head coach Brian Campbell told the media after the game that, you know, we didn't want to use Yole unless it was a, a emergency. He had thrown as long as he had ever thrown in the regional final victory for North Broward Prep. That was a win. And remember, for these teams, the regional finals were just this past Wednesday. He had to throw a bunch of innings in that 2-1, 8-inning win over, over Modder Lakes. Mm -hmm. To get him here, they didn't want to have to use him yesterday. They hoped that they could just stick with Huntsberger. He only got him two innings, so they had to burn Garcia for seven. I think in an ideal world, they would have had Yoel Garcia to pitch this game. But they had to burn him yesterday, and it's a good thing they did, or else they probably do not beat Dunedin yesterday, as they had completely timed up Shane Huntsberger. But we'll see if this North Broward prep talk at the mound does anything as... One of our FHSAA volunteers or administrators just came and said something to the home plate umpire. Is walking towards the North Marion dugout. It looks like there may be someone down in the North Marion dugout by the steps. It's tough for us to see. Yeah, it looks like maybe getting some attention from a trainer down there has brought the game to a halt for the moment being as we get a good look here at the... And is that the base runner at third base? Yep, yeah. that's Gavin okay. Miller. Right. So you wonder maybe if it was a blood <laughs> issue because they were kind of wrapping him up. So he might have gotten 
I didn't. Yeah, I didn't see him leave the field, but I looked over at third. There wasn't a base runner. I was like, well, it's got to be him, right? So you might have just gotten spiked accidentally or somehow drew blood. We don't know, but he's back at third. It's bases loaded, one out for Wyatt Campbell. He was sensational last night in the state semifinal win for North Marion. And the first pitch he sees is at the knees. It's so maybe that pitch from that meeting to Gomberg is settling down a little bit as 14 of his first 18 have been out of the zone. No balls and a strike to Wyatt Campbell. Bases loaded, one out for North Marion. Gomberg, the lefty, deals the 0-1. It is lifted high and deep down the right field line into the corner. That ball is off the wall. It's going to scoot all the way back into shallow right. Two runs will come in to score. It's a two-run double for Wyatt Campbell. What a week he's had in Fort Myers. As a two-run double from Campbell, it's 2-0 North Marion. <laughs> that was kind of a nonchalant. Usually you kind of hear the, the rumbling of the crowd going. I think people thought that might have been foul, but... It just stayed fair down the line. It hits off the wall, and just like that, it's 2-0 North Marion. Their first hit of the game, Thomas, is a big one. <laughs> yeah, you said it. That ball just kind of kept going. You're, you're right. It just I don't think anyone in the ballpark really kind of expected it to stay fair, and uh, a little little breeze out to right, right field and probably helped that one get off the wall a little bit quicker, and, uh, I mean – Two run score on it, and this guy is having himself uh, quite a quite a final four in Wyatt Campbell. Six and two thirds hitless last night. Now a two run double is the 0 1. Excellent breaking ball from Gomber. Catches the outer half for a strike. It's 0 2. Looking for the second out of the inning against the left handed hitting Cooper Jones. Lefty on lefty as the 0-2 pitch from Gomberg is an excuse me swing that is fouled off to the third base side, rolling weakly towards the North Broward dugout. The Colts have struck first on North Broward. We know North Broward has no issue playing from behind. They were down 5-0 through, through an inning and a half yesterday. Came back to win 7-6 in nine innings. The 0-2 pitch, that one comes high and tight. It nearly clipped Cooper Jones to load the bases back up, but it does miss him as it's 1-2. and two. Yeah, And it's, keep in mind, you know, a lot of times you're going to see the premier pitching matchups in the final four games because guys, teams are throwing their aces to try and just get into that championship game. So... A lot, a lot of times you expect to see this premier matchup in because it, it's a state title game, but the way that it's set up, you play the Final Four the day before, uh, you, you don't get here if, unless you pitch your ace th the day before. So a lot of times to win a state title, it, it takes takes some offense, and usually it comes on, on both sides of the, of, the, of the game. So, you know, just falling behind early, a lot, a lot of ball game left uh, for North Broward. Absolutely. Still have all 21 outs at their disposal. Gomberg's 2-2 is low and outside, ball three. And to take what you said one step further, for North Broward, not only did they have to burn their number one last night, they had to burn their number two last night because Huntsberger didn't have it. They got him over 30, so he can't come back. And you had to run Tejeda out there a day before they wanted to to get him here. And Tejeda was phenomenal. But now he's just a DH today. The 3-2, no swing on that one. Walking down to first is Cooper Jones. And Jacob Gomberg has faced six hitters. He's given up four walks, a double. And then he retired Derek Fabian. Of all the guys in this lineup, the one guy he's gotten <laughs> out is the most prolific of the bunch in Derek Fabian. But, again, you wonder how much longer North Broward Prep will allow this to go on. You obviously want Gomburn to go deep into this game. A, he's up near 30 pitches in the first inning. That runs you into trouble as now the, the Calvary has run down. at 7, 18, 19, and we'll get those guys to you in a moment as the first pitch misses for a ball. It's 1 and 0. Oh. For, so for North Broward, that's A.J. Cutler, Jensen Sekuler, and, Nan, and Nathaniel Kupit who are warming up. Cutler has barely pitched this year as he had 
Faced just three batters, and all three of them reached. So Cooler is probably the guy they're going to they're gonna go with in a spot. He's their next highest guy in innings pitched, and then after it, it's Cuppet, who has only thrown a third of an inning. So the bullpen at its barest at the 1-1, low and inside for a ball. I would fully expect that the guy we're going to see is Jensen Sekuler. 21 in the third innings, 9 hits, 8 runs, 2 earned, 25 Ks, 14 walks. I would fully expect that if a change is made at any point in this game, that the sophomore Sekuler will be the guy who gets the baseball. It's a 2-1 count on Nate Fenewald. The 2-1 pitch is in there on the inside corner for a strike. It's even 2-2 two two, as Gomberg north of 30 pitches in this first inning. And if got a good look there from our NFHS network crew, they had a guy in, a way, in the way of what's going on down in the bullpen for North Broward. The 2-2 pitch is a ground ball towards short. This can end it. Flip on to second in time. Turn to first in time. North Broward escapes major damage in inning number one with a critical 6-4-3 double play. Diaz to Benson to Steidel. But North Marion draws four walks, and then they get the two-run double from Wyatt Campbell. To the bottom of the first inning, it's North Marion 2. North Broward coming up as you're watching the Class 4A state championship game on the NFHS Network. This NFHS Network championship event is brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors. The comeback kids of North Broward Prep are going to have to do it again. They trail 2 to nothing, but they have got pop in their bats, and let's see what lineup they sent out tonight. It starts with the left fielder in Clancy March. Jonah Diaz hits second. Yol Tejeda third. Josh Steidel fourth. Ty Richmond in the five-hole. Gian DeCastro hits sixth. Riley Luff seventh. Dylan Runsdorf eight. Kobe Benson in the nine-hole for North Broward Prep. North Marion has a 2-0 lead in the state championship game. This lineup will protect it. Wyatt Campbell will move from pitcher to left field after last night. Eli Garcia plays center. Donnie Salguero in right. Gavin Miller at third. Derek Fabian maintains the shortstop position. Cooper Jones at second. Connor Burks at first. And Nate Fenewall does the catching for Hunter Jones. And for this North Marion team, the Hunter Jones had a very interesting story as part of this team's run to the final four. Jones had to go into quarantine the day he was supposed to pitch the district championship game. And head coach Dale Hall, and, and what he told us before this tournament said, they it was a motivation for his team when, when Hunter had to go into quarantine. That's been a part of the high school baseball season all and, and really every sports season this year nationwide is you never knew when a player would have to go into quarantine, a player would have to be put into isolation because they actually because they tested positive for COVID-19, when your opponent would, would call in the same way and games you thought were on your schedule mm -hmm. would go away. There were teams that, that tested positive late in their seasons and then ended their seasons. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, and you mentioned going into quarantine. Hunter Jones, he actually, Dale Hall said three times during the season he actually had to go into quarantine. So, I mean, <laughs> poor kid. I mean, it's, it's great to see him out there. You know, we don't know if he had how if he was sick or just contact tracing what. I'm not here to speculate that, but uh, great to see him out on the mound here uh, because he's a high school kid and he should be playing baseball. Well, and it's, it's a great little story for this North Marion team to be able to look at Hunter Jones and say, son, you couldn't pitch that district championship game because you got unlucky as a bunt is fouled off down the third base side. You were around the wrong person for the wrong amount of time. You got put into quarantine. But guess what, young man? No one remembers who pitches the district championship game. <laughs> you always remember, especially when you win, who pitched the state championship game. I've been around a couple state championship teams, and I can still tell you 
who pitched each of those games during the run. When you get the ball on this stage, you always be able to say, yeah, I was a starting pitcher in the state championship game as he's ahead of Clancy Marsh. No balls and two strikes. The 0-2 high and tight for a ball. It's 1-2. And, and Dale Hall said Hunter Jones, he's throws about 80, 82 miles an hour with the fastball. We saw right there the two-seamer. Great play at first made as the race to the bag is won by Connor Burks. Went into almost a sliding stop there as he's able to pull it in for the first out of the inning as the leadoff hitter, Clancy Marsh, is retired. Nice job by Burks over there. Almost like a hockey goalie sliding over, except doesn't have the knee pads, uses his glove. But uh, Hunter Jones uses a, a fastball, curveball, and a changeup. He said about 80 to 82, and... We've already seen some pretty good movement with the two-seamer, especially the left-handers. He's, he's tried to start it a couple times now on, on the inner half and uh, kind of bring it back over the plate. Pop up, up and out of play. The the gaps in the, in the season for Hunter Jones, he pitched on February the 16th, throwing an inning against Westport. He then didn't pitch for almost a month. Then he pitched every, basically all every six days of the 1-1 foul back. He pitched the 11th, the 17th, the 23rd, the 30th, and then the 6th. Then didn't pitch again for another two weeks between four and a third innings against Forrest and six innings against Vanguard. And Hunter Jones has not pitched in the last month. As that ball lifted high and deep down the right field line, it will go all the way back into the bullpen area on the right field side. So Jones pitching for the first time in over a month. But again, it's son, you didn't get to pitch in the districts. You didn't get to pitch in the regionals. We're handing you the baseball with the state championship on the line, and he's off to a solid start, retiring Marsh, and now ahead of Diaz. The one-two pitch from Jones. Ground ball right side. Second baseman gloves it. Shuffles over, throw to first in time. And the top two hitters in this North Broward prep order have been retired as both of them have rolled over to the right side of the infield. Yeah, and Cooper Jones at second base there does a nice job showing good range, but then kind of waiting for his first baseman, Connor Burks, to get back to the bag. And uh, just real nice composure, knowing knowing he's got time. Let your first baseman get to the bag, get set, and then he fires a, you know, a throw in plenty of time to retire Diaz. First pitch to Yolta Tejeda, low and inside for a ball. Talk about another guy in Cooper Jones that has had to be persistent and showed perseverance this year as the one I was high and inside. Guy that has had unreal offensive numbers but missed five weeks this year with a hip injury. Yeah, that's right, that's right. The 2-0 pitch is lifted, line drive, shallow right field, a base hit as it dies in front of Donnie Salguero. And Salguero started back on that one as it looked like it was gonna carry off the bat, but it falls in front of him. It's a base hit for Yol Tejeda, and he stands on first two outs for last night's hero, Josh Steidel, who came up with the biggest hit of his life last night in the walk-off double that scored Jonah Diaz and won the state semifinal for North Broward Prep as the first pitch high and inside for a ball 1-0. and and You go back and watch that video of the walk-off last night, and we were talking about it with the, the press guys from the Sun Sentinel and from the Gannett Papers in the press room and the funniest part of that video is you see, and we won't call out any names and we didn't even see the numbers, but three or four of those North Broward players, when they went to change direction and chase down Steidel, all went about teeth first into the <laughs> dirt, try to change direction. I think one guy took out another as the 1-0 misses low and inside. It's 2-0. and It looked like a NASCAR wreck for about three or four of those guys down the line as they went to celebrate Josh Steidel's game winner last night in what was arguably the best game of this tournament. An eight, a seven, six winner for North Broward Prep over a game Dunedin Falcon team. Nine innings. North Broward's had to down five, two going into the six as that one is behind Josh Steidel. Yol Tejeda moves up in a scoring position and North Broward is a base hit from getting a run back. And no one's covering third, so Tejeda danced <laughs> off the bag before realizing that North Marion knew about it. 
But you mentioned it, nine innings last night. North Marion was down 5-2 going into the sixth. They scored one in the sixth, then twice trailed going in, had, were down to their final three outs. They scored two in the seventh to tie it, one in the eighth to keep the game tied, and then walked it off in the bottom of the ninth to get to the state championship game. And they're going to have to rally again tonight as they trail 2-0 to the North Marion Colts as time called briefly. The 3-0 pitch is off the plate, ball four. Just missed away from Steidel, and just like that, it's first and second two outs as Ty Richmond comes to the plate, and if he can find a gap against Hunter Jones, we've got a brand new ball game here at CenturyLink. And Ty Richmond been as hot as anyone here this weekend. Pair of doubles for him yesterday, two for four. And they were not cheap ones. One down the left field line, just over the third base bag, and uh, smoked that left center gap back in the second inning yesterday. It's, uh, he's lo locked in pretty good here. No balls and a strike. Two on, two out, the 0-1. Darts into the zone. That was a nice pitch to get him ahead 0-2. Yeah, you see the curveball there. Dale Hall, North Marion head coach, said, Hunter Jones' curveball has sharp bite to it, and I agree. Jones looking to get out of the inning. The 0-2 pitch. Got him swinging strike three. Strutting off the mound goes Hunter Jones. The North Marion fans are fired up, and the Colts have the lead after an inning. We've played one from Fort Myers. North Marion leads North Broward Prep 2-0 as you're watching the Class 4A state championship game on the NFHS Network. NFHS Learning Center is the leader in online education for the interscholastic community. At NFHSLearn.com, you can find over 70 courses, including more than 30 free courses, such as concussion in sports, heat illness prevention, sudden cardiac arrest, and protecting students from abuse. To learn more, visit the NFHS Learning Center. We come to you from the city of Palms, Fort Myers, Florida, a hub of Southwest Florida, the home since the 2013 season of the FHSAA Finals, and the North Broward Prep Eagles trail by a score of two to nothing. A couple of North Broward's players on the top step of the dugout as they are in support of the starter, Jacob Gomberg. He struggled in the first, gave up two runs, both earned four walks, and the Campbell double off the wall but got a big double play ball, and maybe that's the confidence booster for Gomberg. The pitch count is concerning. It's at a rate that only gets you through about three, but obviously you don't expect a lot more 30 pitch innings that would keep him in the ball game as he's ready to go to start the inning. Misses low and inside for a ball, it's 1-0. 1-0 on the eight hole hitter in Connor Burks. The 1-0 from Gomberg hits Burks. Fifth free pass surrendered by Gomberg as Burks wears one off the ankle or the shin, and he stands on first. And Thomas, we talked about it during the break, but if you're North Broward Prep, I would think you've got a relatively short leash on Gomberg here in the second because you don't want to let this lead. I know you came back from 5-0 last night, but that's not a feat you particularly want to duplicate. Uh, you're 100% right, Brian Campbell, the North Broward coach. I mean, he's kind of he knows he's rolling the dice a little bit, but what he's rolling it is that he's going to find some strikes out of Gomberg because when Gomberg throws the ball over the plate, here's a stat for you: 
hitters are only hitting 149 against him this season. That's the opponent batting average. That's about as low as I've seen of any pitcher here this weekend. Now, where he gets in trouble, obviously, you've seen is when he puts guys on with free passes, if he walks, hit by pitch, and, of course, that, that those are her runs and that drive – not a recipe for success, but if he can find the strike zone, he misses bats all day. No balls and a strike, the 0-1. Bunn is shown, pulled back. It's low for a ball, 1-1. One and one. A 4 point, excuse me, a 3.91 ERA. He's 3-3 three and three on the season. Again, we expect Secular to be the guy. If a move is made to the bullpen, but right now this is Gomberg's game as the lefty will throw over to first, and that one had to be scooped out in the dirt. And they're going to say he balked. I, I kind of thought so live. I kind of thought that was a goofy motion towards second. So a balk will put the runner on second and into scoring position as North Marion has a chance to extend this lead in the second inning. Runner at second, nobody out. Yeah, I didn't quite see necessarily what what the balk was. I'm I, I'm sure there probably was one. It looked like that front foot went a little bit too far towards the plate on the pickoff move. Gotcha. You know, I mean, left-handers a lot of times they'll get away with a little bit more on the pickoff, and you know they get away with doing some funky stuff. And I actually get another look here. Let's see. Watch the foot. Yep. Mm. Yep. 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 So as, as the, his right foot, once that starts towards the plate, you, you can't gain ground towards the plate. Um, so th that's really why it ends up being a balk. He, he gains ground towards the plate and then throws to first. If he, if he d steps directly or re even at a 45-degree angle over to first, uh, that doesn't go as a balk. But as soon as you kind of break that 45 degrees and it's, it's more directed towards the plate, that, that's when it becomes a balk. Two balls and a strike. Point I want to make there on that last one, but we'll get this 2-1 pitch in first. As the 2-1 is, the bunt is missed. There's that missed stuff as it's 2-2. Two and two. Uh, Correct me if I'm wrong on that one. The way I was looking at it, and I was always taught as a pitcher, uh, if your front foot crosses your back and then you go over, that's a balk too. And it looked like that had is what happened there is that front foot had kind of come back, and if it comes back and crosses, that, that is would a be That would be a balk, and uh, that, that definitely could have been what it was. That, that wasn't what I was looking for, but it, it, that's definitely possible. 2-2 two, two is in the dirt for a ball, 3-2, and two. and that may have just been the angle that we were shooting at there, but A, yeah, it did look like he was going a little mm -hmm. bar too far towards the plate, yeah. but it also looked like he had sort of come back right. and crossed over and then made the move, which is a balk. Yeah, you're 100% you're right, when, especially in, even if that toe crosses back. Once you then recross it, you, you got to go home. Gomberg gets the strikeout, his first of the game, as he dials up a high fastball and gets a swing and a miss from Donnie Salguero. So now back to the top of the order and the second trip through for North Mary and a runner on second and one out. The Colts lead North Broward two to nothing in this state championship game. Burks the runner, he stands at second base. He's the first baseman and drew the walk. Excuse me, he was hit by a pitch and then it took second on the balk from Gomberg. Runner on second, one out. First pitch coming to the leadoff hitter, Gavin Miller. The lefty's first pitch up and away for a ball, 1-0. He was looking to bunt for a base hit right there. For Gomberg, that is his 41st pitch. Just 15 strikes in 41 pitches. And um, prior to that pitch, first baseman Josh Steidel was playing pretty pretty far back. He's since moved up. And, uh, that's uh, probably enough to take away the, the bunt for a base hit thought from Gavin Miller. The 1-0 pitch is popped up. First base side looks to be playable. Chasing it over to the dugout is Steidel. He's underneath it. And out number two recorded by North Broward. 
as Gomberg has settled in a little bit here in the second inning. His biggest issue right now is his pitch count being over 40 through an inning and two thirds. But he now deals with Eli Garcia, and you know he'd love to get Garcia and not have to face Derek Fabian. <laughs> yeah, we'll take a rain check on Fabian until the third. Guy with that level of power, you'd much rather face him bases empty than face him two on, two out, knowing that if one, you make a mistake to him, he deposits it over a wall, and you're down 5 nothing for the second night in a row. Gomberg misses low and inside for a ball. It's 1-0, and oh. and i got to think if you're a North Marion, until Gomberg shows the consistency in his strike throwing, I'd probably tell all of my hitters take a strike. Yeah, it's, yeah it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's tough to go against it, especially when, from what you've seen so far today, you know, it's... It's one thing to look at his stats and see that he's walks almost over a batter an inning, and uh, but then you know to game plan for that by taking a pitch from to start the game. That I don't think that's really consistent with their offensive mentality. But once you settle into the game and you see a guy struggling, then I, I think you're absolutely right. You need to make him throw strikes. One one foul back up and over the screen, and just like that. Gomberg, after the hit-by-pitch to start the inning, it's a chance to go one, two, three after it and set down the top hitter in this North Marion order in Miller and then set down the Ave Maria commit in Eli Garcia. Burke still stands at second in the top of the second. Gomberg's one-two pitch is a ground ball to the third base side of the mound. Gomberg's throw nearly pulls the first baseman off but a good play over there by Steidel to keep his foot on the bag. It's a scoreless inning worked by Gomberg as he bounces back to work a strong second inning. We go to the bottom half. The Eagles send the heart of the order of the plate down 2 to nothing. as you're watching the Class 4A state championship game on the NFHS Network. The Florida High School Baseball State Championships. The location tonight for North Broward Prep and North Marion as they battle for the Class 4A State Championship. We've already crowned a champion tonight as the first Academy Royals out of the city of Orlando became the 3A champions in a great 3-0 ball game. Ground ball is down the line of base hit. Around first base and heading for extra bases is Gian DeCastro. DeCastro will book it around second. He's heading for third. The relay throw won't come. It's a triple for Gian DeCastro. And North Broward Prep has some life here in inning number two. It's a leadoff triple for the six-hole hitting third baseman in DeCastro. And North Broward Prep with a golden opportunity to get on the board. How about that? First pitch swinging. The left-hander all over it, right down the line. and He was booking it. He was thinking three out of the box. He never stopped running and moved pretty good around those bases. First pitch to the seven-hole hitter, Riley Luff. To... We're not rooting for either team in this game, but part of me wants Riley Luff to hit a home run in this game because the poor kid came just inches away last night from hitting a ball out of this park as the 0-1 is in there for a strike 0-2 as he hit that double off the left field fence that came 
probably six inches away from clearing the wall for a two-run homer. As the 0-2 just missed. And you're seeing that curveball from Hunter Jones now. Real good feel for it and very good pitch right there. He, he used it to pick up the second strike as well. 1-2 pitch is foul off as he keeps the at-bat alive. It's still 1-2. and two. To go back to your point on Luft, not only did he get robbed of the home run, but you're still thinking he's on second base with just one out. He's going to score a run, and then uh, the next next hitter lines out double play to end the inning. So not only does he uh, get robbed of the home run, but he, he doesn't end up scoring in the inning. And he winds up being struck out. Here in inning number three, or two, I should say, a big first out to get for the man you see, you just saw on your screen in Hunter Jones, you see his opponent in the catcher, Dylan Runsdorf, as he'll step to the plate, looking to just hit the ball up the middle. And if you hit a ground ball to the second baseman or the shortstop, they're playing back, you're going to drive in the run and get North Broward on the board here in the bottom of the second inning. He will instead pop it straight up, but it's going to get up and over the screen and it just hit a railing down there. And a couple <laughs> of the fans look at one of our security folks in the yellow shirt and say, come on, you were right there. You should pull that in. <laughs> Ground ball too short, just as we said. Fabian makes the throw as it's going to be in time, but North Broward Prep is on the board. The leadoff triple from DeCastro does the job as Runsdorf just as prophesized, hits a ball to the shortstop. The smooth shortstop, Fabian, made it look easy for the second out. That's a trade North Marion will make right now. It's two to one as it brings up the nine hole hitter, Kobe Benson, who takes a strike on the outer edge. Yeah, and, and North Broward as well has to feel like probably taking a deep breath now and you know, things looking dire early and uh, since you, you, you've kind of you've had Gomberg settled settle back in, you got out of that first inning with the the big double play with the, the bases loaded to give up just the two runs, and now here you are in the second inning picking up a run, and you're right back in the ball game. Race to first, one by North Marion, a three-one put out ends the inning, frame over. But the North Broward Prep Eagles get a run back as the triple from Gian De Castro yields a run in Dylan Runsdorf's RBI ground out. We've played two innings in the state championship game. The North Marion Colts still have the lead. It's 2-1 after two. You're watching the Class 4A state championship game on the NFHS Network. Everybody knows how good Louisiana food is. For us, it's a way of life. We call it Creole. Creole is the melting pot of cultures, music, and great food. Salt and pepper, no way. On whatever you cook or whatever you eat, use Tony Sachery's Creole Seed. Trust me, I know Creole. And this is the real deal. Oh, yeah. Tony Sachery. Makes everything taste great. High school sports fans, relive your favorite moments. Just click the shopping cart below the video player and select DVD or digital copy to get yours today. Top half of inning number three. We take a look at some of the fans that have made the trip from the east coast of Florida from Broward County, the North Broward Prep Eagles. Down two to one. They have been the comeback kids in this tournament. The North Marion Colts on the other side in that Florida State look, the maroon and the gold with the silver caps with that Denver Bronco-esque logo on the front. North Broward Prep in all white today. Pinstriped look for the region champs from the Miami area, the region four champions with blue caps with North Broward's distinct NBP logo. Top half of inning number three as Gomberg is back on the bump as he misses low for a ball 1-0. Gomberg had a much better second. He is still 
at the 46 pitch mark through two innings as Derek Fabian, the ever dangerous shortstop at the dish, the 1 0. Fabian crushes one into shallow center. That ball just sort of died in this thick air here in Fort Myers, and it will be caught in center. That ball looked like it was going to go right off the bat, but just didn't carry, and it's an easy play for Ty Richmond for out number one. Yeah, he just just gets it off the end of the bat, and, you know, with the power numbers, you you, you see the ball fly off his bat, and you're ready for, for it to leave the yard. Uh, but just, just off the end of the bat, same thing with Ty Richmond. He started back there and uh, able to make up some, some nice ground coming in on it. Tough thing to read as a, an outfielder uh, when that ball's off the bat. A lot of times you, you kind of got to go off the sound. and uh, <laughs> it, the, the difference between the sweet spot and the end of the bat is really not that much, but it makes a massive difference in, in the flight and travel of the ball. Distance, it, the ball's going to go. Count no balls and two strikes, especially in this ballpark where these outfielders are playing pretty shallow because of how deep this ballpark is and you don't expect a lot of guys to hit it over your head which the center field is you know a 405 the dead center and it's 330 down the lines about 375 to the power alleys yeah, and you're a little more worried about getting beat over your head as well because of the the 405 to center it's, you almost feel like if it gets over your head it could be an inside the park home run Two balls, two strikes, the count from Gomberg. So he settled in pretty nicely, but that, you know, he's still going deep into some counts, which keeps driving the pitch count up as the 2-2 pitch is ripped fair down the third baseline. Just past the dive of DeCastro. Hard around first, but staying there will be Jacob Walton. As all that the, that young man has gone through this season, he comes up with a big base hit and gets a runner on first, second hit of the ball game for North Marion as it brings up the man who is the architect of the biggest hit of the game thus far, that's Wyatt Campbell. Yeah, nice swing by Walton there, squaring that up just past the glove of DeCastro. And, uh, on the back end of that play, real nice job by Clancy Marsh coming over, cutting that off, getting it in in a hurry to, to make sure that Walton doesn't advance any, any further than first base. First pitch of the at-bat is low for a ball, 1-0. One ball, no strikes is your count. As the lefty Gomberg comes set, checks his runner. The 1-0 pitch is high and tight for a ball, and Gomberg now down in the count. Two balls, no strikes, as we've heard a lot of umpire kvetching from the North Marion folks. Now the North Broward folks not as happy with the strike zone, but we've been pretty consistent thus far in what's been a ball and a strike from the umpire and crew. The 2-0 pitch from Gomberg is a line drive left center field. Center fielder over. That's past him and all the way to the wall. That's going to roll all the way to the Twin Peaks sign in left center. One run will score. Booking it towards third. Have a tournament. Wyatt Campbell. A double to drive in the first two runs. A triple to drive in the third. And North Marion's lead is back to two. It's three to one making his case for tournament MVP. Making his case for tournament MVP regardless of <laughs> classification as Wyatt Campbell. Let's take a look, an excellent effort in center by Ty Richmond as that ball was screamed into left. He had to try to make the catch over his head, but it rolls all the way to that Twin Peaks sign in left field. It's a triple. And now a big opportunity here with the infield in. First pitch is to the backstop. It comes all the way up the screen. Throw to the plate, not in time. The wild pitch scores Wyatt Campbell. He is all kinds of fired up. Let's look at Wyatt Campbell rocking the headband and the flow. And he has North Marion on top. I don't want to say single-handedly, but he's been involved in all four runs thus far for the North Marion Colts. He's making his mark on this game, to say the least, and comes comes right home after the triple. And 4-1 now. And I, th I think you, in, in the, the heads of North Marion, they know as the 1-0 pitch is a big swing and a miss. Gomberg's hat flew off as he put that one in the zone. It's 1-1. I think North Marion knows they have to bury North Broward to beat them. 
They saw what happened last night, being down 5 nothing, coming back. They've seen what North Broward's done in the playoffs, winning five straight one-run ball games. They know this is not a team, as the one one has swung on and missed, that you can let hang around. If you want to beat this team, you have to do it convincingly because if you let them hang around, they have had a way this postseason, this May, and then back into April of finding a way to win. The Colts know they got to just try to bury this North Broward team, and this is not an easy team to bury as the 1 2 pitch misses. It's 2 and 2 as Gomberg nearing the 60 pitch mark with still one out here in the third. Two balls, two strikes, the 2 2 in the dirt for a ball, and the count is filled up. It's 3 and 2. Full count pitch coming as North Marion tries to start the carousel again. Lefty on lefty as Gomberg's 3-2 misses ball four. Trotting down to first is the second baseman, Cooper Jones, and that is going to bring a mound visit as one of the teams, I would assume, that is playing tomorrow is going to file into the seats there down the third base side as we have a mound visit coming. And that is going to be the end of the day for Gomberg. We'll see what the new pitcher is. It looks like it might be Riley Luft as he's running in. I don't know if they're going to go to Luft to pitch here. Yeah, he's taken off his white tape that would indicate that he's going to be headed to the mound that good call there I like that huh <laughs> now you can't have that tape on your wrist because it would just, it helps to obscure the baseball in theory so we're going to have some defensive maneuverments here but North Broward prep again there is no waiting in the championship game you empty the bullpen if you think there's a problem you're going to make the move and it's time for North Broward prep as they deal with the bottom of this order after the walk to Cooper Jones. Nate Fenewald will be the first hitter. As looks like the 5A finalists from Mosley have come in to take in the ball game down that left field side. As the, we'll get a look at the new pitcher Riley Luft, who has thrown 16 innings on the year. Luft's strikeout and walk numbers are very good. 16 innings, he has 25 Ks, just seven walks. So that's what you want in this situation, a guy that can get swing and miss, but he's going to throw strikes. With just those seven walks, less than a walk every other inning. Yeah, and guys... Opponent batting average just 196 as well. So, you know, he's definitely a guy that can compete, keep him in this ball game, and they've got all the confidence that they're going to be able to put up five, six, seven runs in this game. Uh, they just they just need to settle in and kind of minimize the damage here. As we just took a look at the Mosley Dolphins, who will. Play tomorrow afternoon, state championship game against one of the traditional powers in the state of Florida, Archbishop McCarthy, who was a win over Baron Collier earlier today. Mosley took down Jefferson in their state semifinal. So, runner on first as the day comes to an end. The book is still open on Gomberg as he is responsible for the runner over at first. as Riley Luft is in to pitch. I can double check something here. That is Luft. For some reason, there we go. The our, our game changer had a different pitcher listed for North Broward, but it is indeed Luft. That's why you don't second guess yourself here as Nate Fenewald will step in, pick off throw to first, not in time. And into right it went catch -em eyes excuse my pronunci pronunciation there, number 10. Yeah. 
Pick off throw to first, not in time. So as far as the lineup goes, doesn't change anything because Gomberg is being hit for. So the guy you enter into the game is catching me say for Gomberg is a swing and a miss on the 1-0 pitch, evens it up one and one. So Kachimisa doesn't hit. He'll still be DH4 by Tejeda. But Luft is your pitcher, and they will try to, to ride Riley Luft as far as they can. If he can give them the last four and two-thirds, North Broward Prep will take that as the 1-1 is in the dirt. Good break on that ball in the dirt. And up to second base goes Cooper Jones. He got an excellent read on that baseball. He really did. I mean, so much so that... You almost wonder if it was a delayed steal. He was off and running. I mean, right as that pitch kind of hit the dirt, I mean, before it even skipped away kind of thing, it, that was as, as good of a dirt ball read as I've seen in quite some time. And he runs back to the dugout. Not sure what we've got going here. Ah, our production crew letting us know that there is a rule in the high school baseball and college baseball, I believe, as well. And it goes like this, no jewelry, as they had a necklace around his neck, and the umpire looks at him and goes, yeah, no, son, you got to give that to one of your teammates in the dugout before you run back to second. So that's exactly what he'll do, is he'll trot back to second, sans necklace. <laughs> Two balls and a strike is your pitch. Ready to go is Riley Luft, the new pitcher for North Broward Prep, is the 2-1 inside for a ball. And Luft is down in the count. Three balls and a strike. Tried something off speed there and didn't quite break it back over the plate. Three balls, one strike your count as Luft works from the stretch. His 3-1 is popped up on the right side. Will it stay playable for Steitel? The answer is no. It's into the North Marion dugout, and you know they're not going to offer any help to the Eagle defenders as the count has filled up at 3-2. <laughs> well, it's not to suggest they would let him fall, but... Uh, no, but you know, there's there's going to be right. no calls of, yeah. you know. No. Uh, you got room. You got no, room, nothing got like room. that. Nothing like that. You're right. There, it's going to be, yeah, you figure it out, dude. Yeah, no, yeah, have fun. They, they start looking elsewhere, try and, you know, <laughs> make them think the ball's coming down on the other side of the dugout. Start scrambling away from the near All side right. as it lands on the far side. Count full, three and two. Luff looking for the out. He got it. Freezes Fenewald on a breaking ball in the inside corner and gets the second out of this third inning as the Colts looking to add their 4-1 lead. That'll fall on the shoulders of the first baseman in Connor Burks as 22 strides to the plate. He was plunked his first time up. Luft gets the second out. Again, the runner at second, Jones, the responsibility of the starter in Gomberg. Burks was hit yesterday in the ball game too. First pitch to Burks, swings and misses. Goes to the outside corner, does Riley Luft. Gets a swing and a miss, it's 0-1. Hit 320, 325 on the season. Or, yeah, he did. The 0-1, breaking ball, low it inside for a ball. And the count is evened up at 1-1. One one. This guy that plans to walk on, keep keep his baseball career going next year. Undecided on a college or university at this point. Fielding some offers and talking to some coaches. One ball, one strike, the count of 1-1. One, one. Line drive foul down the rec field side out of play. It's 1-2, and two, and you never know a performance like this for a state championship team and those walk-on offers could turn into some scholarship money as well. A few more eyes on you, you win a state championship can only help, right? Especially with the, some of the talent on the field in this game. You may have a coach that's watching for somebody else and then goes, well, who's this kid? 
Uh, you see it all the time at this state tournament is, you know, the eyes are on, say, a guy like Fabian. And you see, well, wait, wait who's this kid that I wasn't thinking I was watching? And that's how some of these kids wind up at college programs is just catch the eye of the right coach. The one-two is poked foul down the right field side. Great defensive swing there from Burks. Yeah, I mean, you're 100% right with the college coaches seeing seeing a guy and they didn't even come to see. And uh, next thing you know, next year, you start a four-year relationship at, at your program. Uh, happens all the time. One, two, swung on and missed. So Riley Luft does not allow any further damage. But North Marion puts two more on the board. And after two and a half innings in Fort Myers, it's the North Marion Colts on top. It's four to one after two and a half. Go to the bottom of the third when we come back as you're watching the Class 4A State Championship game on the NFHS Network. Bottom half of inning number three. Hunter Jones has been pretty good through two innings for the North Marion Colts. He will now deal with the third set of hitters for the North Broward Prep Eagles. It'll start with Clancy Marsh, the left fielder. Marsh, Diaz, Tejeda, the top of the order for the North Broward Prep Eagles in the bottom of the third inning as North Marion leads by a score of four to one. As the first pitch of the inning is high and outside, you are watching live coverage of the FHSAA Baseball Championships on the NFHS Network. NFHSnetwork.com slash FHSAA is your destination for the most comprehensive coverage of Florida high school playoff action as the 1-0 is low and inside for a ball. It's 2-0. and And again, this is a North Broward Prep Eagles team. They are not going to roll over. For North Mary, and they have come back time and time again as the 2-0 swung on and missed. He chased a high fastball. May have gotten a little piece of it, but nobody on, so it doesn't really make a difference. It's 2-1. and one. Yeah, not going to roll over. They had some quality at bats the first time through the lineup, and Clancy Marsh was one of them. 0 for 1, but hit the ball hard to first base his first A.B. 2-1, Marsh chases the 2-1 outside as Jones has evened up the count. Two balls and two strikes. Two, two, in there, strike three. Jones strikes out the leadoff hitter, Clancy Marsh. He gets his third punch out of the afternoon, of the evening, and he has retired Marsh to bring up Jonah Diaz. A real nice breaking ball from Hunter Jones there with the left-handed hitter. He just catches the back door of the plate, starts that one off in the right-handed hitter's batter's box, and... Just breaks it back over, catches the black, and uh, that real nice sharp curveball for the K. First pitch of the at-bat, bounces in for a ball, 1-0. One ball, no strikes, the 1-0 pitch. A high pop fly will get back towards the outfield. Shortstop Derek Fabian will corral it. And just like that, Fabian retires Jonah Diaz as it'll now be old Tejeda. Last night's pitching winner for North Broward. We'll try to get something going here in the third with the Colts leading the Eagles 4-1. to one. Tejeda one for one. Base hit out to right field his first A.B. That ball on a line as well. And uh, 
a couple hits yesterday hit the ball hard a few times. So it's a guy that can certainly extend this rally, or start a rally, I should say. The 0 1 low and outside for a ball evens the count. It's one ball and one strike. One one pitch is a line drive just past the dive of the second baseman in Cooper Jones as Yol Tejeda continues to swing the bat well in this final four. He has two of the three hits for North Broward. And he's on first, and it brings up the cleanup hitter who walked his first time up in Josh Steidel. Yeah, Tejeda really, really loves to pull the ball. Is kind of his sweet spot. And all four of his hits here over the past couple days out to right field, and all four of them hit just like that one. And it's going to be first and second with two outs as Steidel wears the first pitch, so he's been on base twice without having to swing the bat, a walk, and now a hit by pitch. And a tying run comes to the plate in the person of the center fielder, Tyler Richmond. One of the guys you'd like up there, right? We, we saw yesterday, mentioned it uh, his first time around. Two doubles yesterday, both hit them both on a line, and uh, two outs need a hit. He's, your, he's one of your guys. Fouls off the first pitch of the A-B, no balls and a strike. Colts looking to get the final out of this third inning, move 12 outs away from their first state championship in school history. North Broward, though, we saw last night, and we've seen all season long, they're going to make you earn the 21st out as the 0-1 is in the dirt. It's even 1-1. One and one. one ball, one strike, your count from the right-hander Jones. His 1-1 one, one breaking ball snaps in. And Thomas mentioned earlier in the game, that seems to be the best pitch in the arsenal of Hunter Jones. Yeah, and he's got the feel for it. It's He's really throwing it for strikes when he wants to, and uh, his North Broward hitters are going to have to respect it. 1-2 is lasered foul down the left field side out of play. You know, it's not he's – show, he's shown the ability to throw it for a strike that you can't just dismiss it as, as a pitch is so often the case with uh, so many high school pitchers, you, you make him throw that off-speed pitch for a strike, but he's shown that he can do it, so you got to battle against it. Again, ripped foul down the left side as back-to-back one-two deliveries have been scalded foul down that third base side. If he can just wait that extra split second and turn that level of contact into fair territory, it's going to get around the board for the Eagles. And that was a curveball right there by Richmond. Good job battling it. And, again, Hunter Jones throws 82, maybe 83 miles an hour. So it's not as if you can just sit up there and, and pepper that fastball either. It's, it takes some, some pretty quick reaction up there. And when you get that hard looping curve, it, it's not an easy task offensively. One ball, two strikes, the one-two pitch. Hopped up again. Pull, pull, pull. Those last three swings from the hitter. As Richmond trying to straighten something out here and get North Broward to run back in the bottom of the third with North Marion out to a 4-1 lead bottom third. And Richmond now, he's timed up the fastball and seen the curveball a couple times. Thought he had gotten strike three, but below the knees of Richmond, and it's deuces wild. Two balls, two strikes, two outs, two on. For North Broward prep, tying run is the, at the plate in Ty Richmond. A couple doubles here, and North Broward could be right back in this ball game. One double, and they could be down just to run. The 2-2 pitch is rolled over, and another ball is pulled, as he seems to be ahead of everything. And that's where if you're, I think if you're Hunter Jones, you know, you don't have the dominating fastball, but if he is ahead of everything you're throwing, he's going to probably try to slow his swing down a little bit. Maybe that's where you challenge him with a fastball. Uh, I mean, he definitely, uh, he, he's been trying a few things here. Maybe we see him try and elevate a fastball and uh, 
credit Ty Richmond for, for battling tough here. The 2-2. Two -two. Line drive center field. That ball drops in for a base hit. The throw will come to the plate. It's cut off. Now to the plate, not in time. It's an RBI single for Ty Richmond. And North Broward Prep is right back in this ball game. They've got the tying run aboard. Down 4-2. I mean, that's that's as good of an at-bat as we've seen here over the past week. You know, with two strikes on you, fouling off. He must have fouled off five pitches uh, with two strikes on him. And all tough pitches behind in the count just works it back to 2-2 two -two and gets himself a fastball and doesn't try to do too much. Laces out to center field for a, a big two-out RBI. Speaking of big RBIs, standing to plate. Gian DeCastro didn't have an RBI, but had that big triple in the last inning that evident that eventually got North Broward on the board on the RBI ground out. If he extra base gets an extra base hit again, this game's tied. So Gavin Miller, third baseman, call time out there. Have a have a word or two with with Hunter. Two balls, no strikes, the count on DeCastro. And if you walk DeCastro, it puts the go-ahead run on base for North Broward Prep. For Riley Luft, the pitcher, the 2-0. Ground ball right side, gloved by the first baseman. He flips it, it gets through the legs of the pitcher. It gets away, one run will score. The second run comes around, he will stay at third. It's a one-run ball game as the Eagles have gotten two back here in the third, and it's a 4-3 North Marion lead, as that looked a little awkward coming off, and the throw looked maybe to be a little bit low. It went five hole on the covering pitcher in Hunter Jones, and it's a 4-3 game. North Broward, the comeback kids will not go away. Let's take a look. Ground ball to first, realized he had to flip it, and yeah, he just went straight five hole and missed the glove of the covering pitcher Jones. Yeah, see what made that a little unnatural for Connor Burks over there. He fields it pretty deep, and he's kind of in between whether to, to underhand toss it as this first pitch goes foul by Riley Luff, whether to kind of underhand toss it as you practice every time. Uh, you almost never are throwing that overhand and you could kind of see him looking at the the distance between him the bag and his pitcher like I'm gonna have to throw this overhand and it just it didn't look comfortable from the start and uh, kind of spikes it and uh, North Broward happy to uh, unwrap that gift swing and a miss on an 0-1 trying to keep the lead intact is Hunter Jones as it's no balls and two strike. Jones has thrown north of 20 pitches in this inning and he will be north of 50 through three at minimum as the 0-2 from Hunter Jones. Grounded foul, we do it again, 0-2. The top relief arm available for North Marion in innings wise is the junior 15, Wyatt Cayley. He's thrown 40 innings on the year. No balls, two strikes, the count, the 0-2. Swung on and missed strike three. Throw will need to come to first. It is made. And the inning is over. North Marion hangs on to the lead. But the comeback kids from Coconut Creek are right back in the ball game. Two in the bottom of the third for North Broward Prep as we go to the fourth inning. Should be a good one down the stretch. 4-3 North Marion when we come back as you're watching the 4A state championship game on the NFHS Network. This NFHS Network Championship event is brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors.
top half of inning number four. North Broward Prep has gotten back within a run as just a little bit of daylight left over the ballpark here at Hammond Stadium in Fort Myers, but the lights are on over the CenturyLink Sports Complex as over the next four innings, who knows, maybe more, will decide the sixth of our seven state champions in the past week plus here in Fort Myers as the North Marion Colts in the red jerseys have a 4-3 lead over the North Broward Prep Eagles in white. As we get a look at Riley Luft back on the bump for North Broward. He is in charge of trying to keep this game close and he will deal with a what has been a dangerous order thus far for North Marion. It will start here in the top of the fourth inning. 9-1-2, and two. Donnie Salguero to lead it off, then back to the top of the order with Gavin Miller and Eli Garcia. And Donnie Salguero, two for three yesterday. Hit the ball hard in both those both those hits. Had a single up the middle in the third, and then back in, in the last inning in the seventh, he had a, a big-time base hit through the 5-6 hole. Smoked that ball, and uh, he's a guy that reached base safely with a 412 on base percentage this season. And the average was a little lower than he would have liked, but getting hot at the right time here. First pitch of the AB misses low and outside for a ball 1 and 0. Salguero to lead it off, trying to find his way aboard as North Marion is time called right before that pitch. He's going to the curveball there. Interesting behind 1-0 to the, to the nine hitter. A 1-0 pitch below the knees for a ball. It's 2-0. Actually, maybe that, maybe that actually is his fastball, just with some almost like a sinker. Good movement on it. Mound meeting after two straight. We're out of the zone from Riley Luft. Four runs, three hits and an air for North Marion. Three runs, four hits and an air for North Broward Prep. Two balls, no strikes. The righty's 2-0 is in there on the outside corner for a strike. It's 2-1. and one. Two, one. Yeah, he, he takes that same same grip in, in every pitch we've seen here. So I, I'm not sure exactly... <laughs> it, it, what it is, it's almost like a, a sinker slider. 3-1 upstairs, ball four. You walk the nine hole, it puts Donnie Salguero aboard. And the dangerous North Marion lineup will turn over to the top. And Gavin Miller. Gavin yeah, Miller, here, here's a guy who's... We'll overdue for for the weekend here. He'd love to find a find a hole, get himself his first base hit here in the state championship. Has reached base, walked yesterday, and walked back in the first today. So, wouldn't imagine he's pressing or anything. But you know, you, you you're playing in the state championship final four. First things to to win the game, but you, you'd love to have a hit to your name, you know. Big swing and a miss on the first pitch he sees. No balls and a strike. Oh and one the count on the left-handed hitting Miller. Top of the order at the plate for North Marion. Miller, Garcia, and Fabian. The 0-1 pitch is a great bunt third base side. Glove, bare hand throw in time. Good bunt gets the... Runner Salguero in a scoring position as now you've got the two college guys in Garcia and Fabian with an opportunity to re-extend this lead for North Marion. That's a nice job by Gavin Miller getting that down and 
a nice job over there by DeCastro you just saw there and kind of charges hard then chops his steps gets that under control and kind of able to in stride keep his momentum going towards first and casually make the play first pitch of the at bat catches the outside corner for a strike it's 0-1 Runner at second, one out. Salguero the runner after the bunt. Garcia at the plate. The 0 1 coming to Eli Garcia. He lines it foul up and over the screen, and he's down 0 2. See Garcia trying to go the other way there with the off speed pitch, use the whole field, and expect him to continue that approach here with behind in the count 0 and 2. It's a guy that hit 400 this season. That doesn't come without a, a smart approach. The 0-2, ground ball towards second. Collected in time by Benson. His throw to first is in time. And there's two gone in inning number four for the Colts. And now you deal with the ever-dangerous shortstop, Derek Fabian. He hits with a runner on third and two gone here in the fourth inning. A big-time spot for the UF commit. A little surprised they're pitching to him here and not just putting him on, quite honestly. With two away. First pitch of the at-bat. In the dirt for a ball. I think the fear with Fabian is Walton is hitting the ball well. If you put Fabian on and he pull, goes up to second base on a potential steal, and if Walton shoots one through, you're right back down by three the way you were entering the last half inning. The 1-0 to Fabian in the dirt for a ball, but they are being careful with him. It's 2-0. and Yeah, that's a great point. I mean, Walton is the hottest hitter on this Colts team over the, the last day and a half here in that on-deck circle. Foul ball back to the screen, and it's 2-1. and one. Two balls and a strike as into the motion, the 2-1 pitch. Misses low and outside, it's 3-1. and one. Yeah, you're definitely being careful here with Derek Fabian. The last thing you want is to let the best player on that team beat you again. 3-1, catches the corner for a strike. It's 3-2 and two to Fabian. Even with the 3-1 count, even behind, he's still not giving in. You, you see him go to the off-speed pitch there. and uh, Fabian, of course, looking fastball in the 3-1 count. That's, that's a real nice pitch from Luft. Three balls, two strikes, and two outs. The 3-2 pitch. In there, strike three. Riley Luft strikes out Derek Fabian to strand a runner on third as North Broward prep. Starting to turn the momentum in their direction. They still trail, though, to the bottom of the fourth. It's 4-3 North Marion as you're watching the FHSAA Class 4A state championship game on the NFHS Network. Everybody knows how good Louisiana food is. For us, it's a way of life. We call it Creole. Creole is the melting pot of cultures, music, and great food. Salt and pepper? No way. On whatever you cook or whatever you eat, use Tony Sachery's Creole season. Trust me, I know Creole. And this is the real deal. Oh, yeah. Tony Sachery. Makes everything taste great. North Marion, North Broward Prep. Bottom of the fourth inning, 
of the Class 4A State Championship game under the lights at the spring home of the Minnesota Twins, the summer home of the Fort Myers Mighty Muscles. It's North Marion, two in the first, two in the third. On top of North Broward Prep, one in the second, two in the third for the Eagles as they will face for the fourth inning Hunter Jones. It will start with the eight, nine, and one hitters, Dylan Runsdorf, then Kobe Benson, and back to the top of the order, and Clancy Marsh as this team starts to get their third look through the order at the starter, Hunter Jones, as they got two off him in the third. And the first pitch from Jones is inside for a ball 1-0 as Jones has thrown 55 pitches through three, a pace that would dictate that you would need to see a move to the bullpen before we're done for North Marion. Yeah, definitely uh, some pitching matchup or pitching changes. Quite a few of them still to come in this ball game, you, you believe. We've already seen the one. Question is, do we see, what more do we see, I should say? Line drive left field, base hit. Down the left field line, the catcher runs Dorf. Motors around first. He is in standing up at second. And North Broward Prep could be a base hit away from tying this game in the bottom of the fourth inning. As the eight-hole hitting catcher is aboard, he will be run for by number five, Wyatt Moss. But Runsdorf comes through, and North Broward Prep is in business here in the fourth. And another quality at bat by Dylan Runsdorf. He's, he's really just been a guy down there in the bottom of this lineup here all weekend. Hit the ball hard a couple times yesterday. Drives in the first run of the game back in the second today, and uh, this time hitting himself aboard, leadoff double, smoking it down that left field line. And uh, you get the bonus as, as the catcher. You, you can bring your speedster Moss in to run for him. And I mean, he's as dangerous a, a base runner as, as anybody that's, that's played here over the past week. One ball, no strike the count. On the left-handed hitting second baseman, Kobe Benson. Tying run at second for North Broward Prep as they have looked to rally from another deficit. Benson's bunt is foul over the screen as the count evens at one and one. One ball, one strike from Jones is 1-1 one, one pitch. Is a bunt that's popped up. Catcher racing back, but it's going to get over his head. It's back off that warning track area behind home plate as now the bunt will probably come off. The count one out, one and two. Yeah, it'd be interesting. We, we've definitely seen a few teams keep the, the bunt on with two strikes here recently. But just, just never know. The one, two. In there, strike three. There's that curveball yet again. It darts into the zone, and there's one away. A big strikeout, but now you got to deal with the top of the order as it starts with a left fielder in Clancy Marsh. See the positioning here. You see Derek Fabian right, right on. Hard ground ball to second. They check to see if there's anything at third. There isn't. The throw to first in time. As a frustrated Clancy Marsh thought he could have done more with that pitch, but he gets the runner to third. And Jonah Diaz, who scored the winning run last night in the bottom of the ninth inning, has a chance here in the fourth to tie the game. Yeah, ball hit hard by Marsh, and frustrating when you when you top it right at somebody. But, uh, let's see if Yona Diaz can pick him up. First pitch of the at bat misses the zone, a hand thrown up by Jonah Diaz to say, "Nope, nothing here. Stay at third. One ball, no strike. The one zero. -oh. 
snapped into the zone for a strike. It's even the count at one and one. One ball, one strike, the count. The one one from the righty. Bunt shown, did he go around? They ask, the answer is yes. He did not pull the bunt back and he's down in the count one two. Jonah's unhappy and not sure I blame him. I don't know. I don't know if he pulled that back or not. But the umpire right there says he doesn't, and it's one and two. Two outs trying to bunt for the base hit to drive in the run. Takes the pitch. It gets a little bit away from the catcher in Fenewald, but he jumps back on it, and it's deuces wild. It's two balls, two strikes, two outs. Two balls, two strikes, two outs as Jonah Diaz tries to tie the game for North Broward Prep. The 2-2 from Jones in the dirt, squirted away. Dancing off the bag at third was the runner in Wyatt Moss, and he had to scramble back. Luckily, there was no one on the bag. If somebody's there on the bag, he might have gotten hosed at third, but there was no throw to be made as the count is filled up 3-2. and two. It's a, it's a pretty good aggressive offer by Moss there at third. And you know, with the left-hander at the plate, often the third baseman's playing way over to towards the shortstop. And he's well aware of that as well on third base, that he can get a little bit more down that line. So uh, pretty good heads-up play at third base, I thought. 3-2, a blooper, shallow left. Back is the third baseman. Mm. Catch is made on a knee as making sure he brought it in was Gavin Miller. A scoreless inning worked by Hunter Jones as the North Marion Colts, nine outs away from the state title, but they're going to have to work for all nine. It's a one-run lead over North Broward. We go to the top of the fifth inning, 4-3 North Marion as you're watching the FHSAA Class 4A state championship game on the NFHS Network. The NFHS Learning Center is the leader in online education for the interscholastic community. At NFHSLearn.com, you can find over 70 courses, including more than 30 free courses, such as concussion in sports, heat illness prevention, sudden cardiac arrest, and protecting students from abuse. To learn more, visit the NFHS Learning Center. Riley Luft on the bump for the stretch run here in the state championship game. North Broward, North Marion. As North Marion got two in the first, they've led ever since. Led 2-0 after the first, 2-1 after the second, and 4-3 after the third. Our first scoreless inning of the game came in the fourth. We stand here top of the fifth inning as high school sports fans never miss another game. Become a subscriber to the NFHS Network to watch live event coverage, game replays, and highlights from high school sporting events from across the country. Millions of athletes, thousands of games, one destination, NFHSnetwork.com. We are high school as the first pitch is out of the zone. It's 1-0 from Riley Luft as leading things off is Jacob Walton. And after Walton comes Wyatt Campbell, who has been undoubtedly this game's MVP at the moment as the 1-0 pitch is low and outside for a ball. It's 2-0. Two balls, no strikes. The 2-0 is in there for a strike on the inner half. It's 2-1 on the cleanup hitting DH, Jacob Walton, the Santa Fe commit. Hmm. 
2-1, finds the zone, and Luft has evened it up on Walton. Two balls, two strikes. And we mentioned it yesterday, Jacob Walton playing with a torn ligament in his elbow. Injured it in a bullpen session two weeks before the season. The 2-2 pitch, Walton fouls it off, and we do it again. It's still 2-2. Two and two. You know, That elbow needs surgery, but made the decision that he, he wants to stick it out, help the team offensively in any way he can, and uh, help him try and win a state title. And here he is tonight playing for one. The 2-2 in the dirt for a ball, and the count is filled up. Three balls and two strikes. Full count coming, and I think you want to put Walton on, knowing how well Wyatt Campbell has swung the bat to 3-2. In there, strike three. Painting the inside corner is Riley Luft. He gets Jacob Walton, and the bases will be empty for our, maybe the hottest hitter in the state of Florida, Wyatt Campbell. Sir, it's been on fire. Halfway to the cycle with a double and a triple today. That's not like a no-hitter, right? No. <laughs> That's just a fact. I can talk about that, right? And we talked about the no-hitter yesterday, and it didn't jinx a thing. We ended it with a no-hitter. As the first pitch to Campbell is in the zone for a strike 0-1. It wasn't a solo no-hitter, but no-hitter's a no-hitter, regardless if it's one guy or ten. The 0-1 pitch is a line drive. Three for three is Wyatt Campbell. He'll come around first, and Wyatt Campbell is a home run away from the cycle. A double, a triple, and a home run, and a single. Now for Wyatt Campbell, and he is almost certainly going to be our player of the game if North Marion can hang on for the final nine outs and win the state title. Kickoff throw to first, not in time. Here's a guy, Cooper Jones, just kind of Kind of getting into mid-season form here, only 36 at-bats coming in due to a, an injury. He missed a lot, a lot of time early on after a, a torrid start. and uh, his, his numbers are gaudy offensively. Hit 583 coming into the final four on the season and uh, 674 on base percentage to go with that. First pitch was a ball, second pitch is a ball. Two balls, no strikes. As you know he'd love to swing the bat here as Cooper Jones with two walks to his credit today. He's been on base be the free pass. One of six drawn by North Marion in this game. A 2-0 pitch coming from Riley Loft. The righty deals the 2-0. It's lined deep down the right field line, trailing towards the line and making the catch in right is Mason Katjamise. He gets the second out of the inning. It keeps the runner in Wyatt Campbell at first and brings up the catcher in Nate Fenewald. Nice job tracking that down by Mason out there. Number 10 entered the game I think back in the second, earlier in the game anyways, as a when uh, the starter came out. And uh, nice job tracking that ball down. Runner at first, two outs. North Marion nursing a 4-3 lead here in the top of the fifth as the first pitch of the at-bat is a blooper that will stay in the infield. First baseman Steidel makes the catch, and it's a second straight scoreless inning. Worked by Riley Luft. He's keeping North Broward prepped within a run. They'll take another chance to take the lead in the bottom of the fifth. After four and a half, it's 4-3 North Marion as you're watching the Class 4A state championship game on the NFHS Network.
A beautiful night as the last rays of the daylight are being shrouded in hues of blue and purple in the night sky above Fort Myers. It has been a beautiful week or so as the North Broward Prep Eagles with seven or eight guys and <laughs> right on the top step. Is that you've seen that all week long for all of these teams is there's no sitting on the bench for these games. You are top step and hanging on that front railing all game long. We saw that in that 3-8 championship game between Westminster and, and First Academy. The student sections were both standing the entire game because that was a high-energy championship game that saw Orlando First Academy as your state champions in Class 3A. North Marion, nine outs away from their state championship, but far from a guarantee as North Broward, who have been the comeback kids of this tournament, erased the biggest deficit of this tournament, down 5 nothing last night to Dunedin. Came all the way back for an extra inning win, and they've got nine outs to play with as that first pitch is belted high and deep to right center field. All the way back and off the glove of the center fielder, Garcia, standing up at second base. It's a leadoff. Double, at least for now, to Yol Tejeda. We'll see how they score it. It looked like Garcia, who made a long run, was there in right center, but it bounces off his glove, and Yol Tejeda is on base for the third time today, and let's take a look at it. That ball was utterly crushed, probably 350 feet. Garcia, he just dropped it. That probably should go as an air, as... Garcia was right there. It's a That's a bang, bang, one way or the other, but I believe they've scored that as an error as the first pitch is a strike on the outer half, 0-1. Yeah, probably has to go as an error, but he went. A, Garcia went a long way for that ball, and that was hit a mile high up into this twilight that we actually saw the, the sky of coming back from the break. So by no means a routine play, but tough to score it. Other any way other than an error. But that's exactly what they did. It has been scored officially a double oh, for wow. Yol Tejeda. There you go. Four runs, four hits, and an error for North Marion. 3-6-1 for North Broward. So the tying run now stands on second with nobody out in the fifth inning. And the cleanup hitter, Josh Steidel, last night's hero, at the plate for a 1-1 pitch. Jones is 1-1 to Steidel. Catches the outside corner. Steidel is Furious, You saw the immediate reaction from Steidel doing the old 360 spin move in the <laughs> boxes. That's the usually a smart idea, just sort of walk away and whatever words you need to mutter to yourself, it's better to mutter to yourself than to the gentleman in the collared shirt. The one-two to Steidel. Fouled off down the third base side. We have no idea what Steidel said, if there's anything that he shouldn't say or not, but it's better to just walk away and that sort of collect your thoughts. Yeah, I mean, I know what he was thinking. It was a curveball, and he saw it all the way through, and he made a conscious decision not to swing because he saw it off the plate, and then he gets <laughs> gets called for the strike. Fouls off the one-two pitch. Got just a tiny piece of it to keep the at-bat alive. We do it again. Still one and two. Bottom of the fifth inning. North Marion leads North Broward four to three, but the leadoff double from Yol Tejeda He's three for three today with a double now. As that one is up and away, it's one and it's two and two. Gotta think Tejeda might be a favorite for player of the game if North Broward can rally, but still if North Broward rallies, someone's gonna come up with a go ahead or possibly walk off hit. They've still got nine outs to play with. A chance to tie the game here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Two two pitch. Off the edge of the plate, North Marion thought they had strike three. Instead, the count has filled on Josh Steidel, who is 0 for 0 today. Steidel, is, he's seen everything here from Jones. He knows is in everything. He's, he's thrown everything at him, so I, I give him the benefit here. And he draws ball four. He works the walk. And the go-ahead run is aboard for North Broward. First and second, nobody out here in the bottom of the fifth inning as it brings up the five-hole hitting center fielder, Ty Richmond, one for two with an RBI to his credit today as time will be called. 
Right-handed action is now up in the bullpen for North Marion. A fun ball game here in Fort Myers. The Colts hanging on to a 4-3 lead. They scored all four of their runs in the first three innings. So far, so have the Eagles. We played a scoreless fourth and a scoreless top of the fifth. But North Broward now with a major threat as action is up in the pen. It looks to be number five for the North Marion Colts. So they have the same guy that finished it up last night, Carson Smith, who finished up that no-hitter yesterday for North Marion behind Wyatt Campbell. He's going to be the guy that might get tasked with winning a state championship for North Marion as Hunter Jones has thrown four innings of work, is at 76 pitches, so just about 30 pitches left to go for him. First and second, nobody out. First pitch, bunt. Oh, it's it going to be, that one. might be a base hit. To the left side, no throw. It's a bunt single for Ty Richmond. A picture-perfect bunt down the third baseline. No throw to be made. And it's bases loaded, nobody out for North Broward Prep. And to the plate comes Gian DeCastro. Well, it's a bunny situation, right? You're thinking sack, bunt, and Ty Richmond does one better. <laughs> Putting this basically into no man's land down the line. and Really nothing Gavin Miller could have done. It's just a, a perfect bunt. Miller's not, not charging, and uh, it's, it's an infield bunt single for Ty Richmond, and base is now loaded, nobody out. We saw it in the first game, the first title game today. Sometimes the defensive miscues proved to be huge. The dropped ball in right center in the gap starts it off. Bases loaded. Line drive left field down for a base hit. This game is tied at four. The cutoff throw comes in, freezes everybody, but it's an RBI single for DeCastro and North Broward Prep. They've come back again and again and now again as they've tied this game at four. Down five in the, in the state semis, down three in the state finals, and that is gonna be the end of the day for Hunter Jones, a gutty four innings plus, but he will exit the game with the bases loaded and nobody out as North Broward Prep is on the doorstep of taking the lead for the first time today as action continues in the bullpen. North Broward's prep fans are hearing it right now. As that's the end of the day, they took a longer time to, ch to chat with Hunter Jones to try to earn themselves a few extra warm-up pitches for Carson Smith. So after the clutch finish yesterday, it wasn't clutched by the score, but it was clutched to get himself a no-hitter. He now comes in in the most troublesome of spots. Bases loaded, nobody out, tie game. Yeah, welcome welcome to the ball game. State championship, bases loaded, nobody out, 4-4. If you're North Broward, huh? I mean, quite a, quite a job coming back. They trailed from the get-go, and not only the momentum in this game, but it's, it's now uh, time to... <laughs> Time to minimize the damage if if you're North Marion as the, the roles have kind of reversed in this game. And if you're North Marion, you said you got to try to keep this going as you see 17, Jacob Walton, he's one of this team's leaders as he goes up to his pitcher, Hunter Jones, and says, hey, you haven't pitched in a month. You gave us everything you had. We're in this game. You pitched us in this game. Now we're going to come behind you. Now we're going to get outs. Now we're going to get hits. We're going to get this one for you, buddy. But the bases are loaded for Carson Smith. As what a spot for him. Can he get this North Broward order as he'll face his counterpart in Riley Luft? So reliever versus reliever here in the bottom of the fifth inning as North Broward Prep looks to erase yet another deficit and take the lead here in the bottom of the fifth inning 
of this state championship game. Yeah, and the, we'll probably, you would think, play play back up the middle and probably, one, try and give themselves a little more depth, and two, hope to turn a double play. You give up the run and the lead, but gives you an opportunity to, to get back into the dugout down just a run and still have two two cracks at it offensively to, to get that back. But we'll see. Uh, just as I say that, it looks like they may bring this entire infield in all the way around, which it's, uh, it's a kind of a high risk, high reward proposition with nobody out and uh, kind of giving up that depth. But with just six outs to play with, you are really desperate to keep this a 4-4 game. This North Broward prep team is no stranger to rallies. They had to rally in the district championship game down 2-1 through three against Jensen Beach. They had to rally against an Eden. They've won close game after close game after close game. And if they can win one more close game, they'll have the first state championship in their school's history. A big sigh from the start, from the reliever. It's in the dirt for a ball, 1-0. Good stop behind the plate from North Marion's Nate Fenewald as the count starts 1-0. Nowhere to put him. Infield, as you mentioned already, in all the way around against Riley Luft, the 1-0. In the dirt again, it's 2-0. This is a North Broward prep team that had to win an extras to get to the final four. The 2-0, in the dirt again, it's 3-0. And North Broward is now a ball away from taking their first lead of the championship game. Modder Lakes Academy scored at the bottom of the seventh to force extras on North Broward. No momentum in their category. They score in the eighth inning to win two to one. The 3-0 pitch in the dirt, ball four, and North Broward has taken the lead in the state championship game. They've scored two here in the fifth, and North Broward leads it five to four. North Broward was up 8-2 in their regional semi against American Heritage. Had to hold on for dear life on the road and did so to win 9-8. They were up 4-2 on Somerset Academy in the first round of the tournament. Gave up a run in the bottom of the sixth for that game to go extras. Then had to score in the top of the ninth of that game. As we'll have a pinch runner here a courtesy runner for North Broward for the pitcher Luft. That's 31, Jake Hisano. And then they were down 2-1 after three in the district final against Jensen Beach. That was a game North Broward was not even the one seed in their district tournament. <laughs> They were the two seed. They got a forfeit win over Glade Central and then got the extra inning win over Jensen Beach. They have been the cardiac kids of this tournament as they have it in there for a strike. It's 0-1 with North Broward now possibly one extra base hit away from breaking this game open. Dylan Runstorff probably the take sign on there after Carson Smith came in and the four four pitch walk probably make him throw a strike and does a nice job to do so there and, and get ahead. The 0-1 in the dirt for a ball. It's even at a ball and a strike. North Broward Prep has taken the lead 5-4 here in the bottom of the fifth inning. They've scored four unanswered runs. Last night they had to score five unanswered runs to bring a game into extras. Their one, one pitch, strike at the knees, it's one and two. A 
One ball, two strikes the count. The one-two pitch is in the dirt. Squirts away, but not far enough from the catcher in Fenewald, and the count has gone even. Two balls and two strikes, still nobody out here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Runstorf's last five at bats this weekend. He's put the ball in play every time. And he's squared it up more often than not with three hits in the, those five. Foul ball on the 2-2 pitch. We do it again. It's still even. Two balls and two strikes on the eight-hole hitting catcher, Dylan Runsdorf. Can North Broward add to their lead? Or can North Marion keep this a one-run game and give their potent offense six outs to play with? The 2-2 pitch. Foul back to the screen. We do it yet again. Another two-strike battle. We've seen it on both sides tonight. And, uh, guys just battling, extending at bats, and uh, something that most of these pitchers probably probably didn't have to work quite so hard to record outs during the season. The 2-2. Two -two. Ground ball is past the third baseman into left field. One run will score. Second run motors around. He will score. Throw to third is offline. It's a two-run single into left from Dylan Runsdorf. And North Broward Prep has put four up. In the bottom of the fifth inning, they lead it seven to four. And how about that battle by Dylan Runsdorf at the plate? And gets, falls behind with the one-two count and just battles, battles, takes a ball low and fights off another two-strike pitch and gets something he can handle and I'll get another look here. Is a pretty good swing by the infield in Gavin Miller at third, and that cost him just a little bit of depth. And that's a ball if he's able to glove, probably able to step on third. And you might be thinking double play, but uh, credit Dylan Runsdorf and just battling and putting the ball in play. And uh, as a result, uh, a big time two RBI base hit to kind of open this one up. That has officially been scored an error on the third baseman as the 1-0 is low for a ball and 2-0. Tough to give him the error there when he's playing in, but we're not the official scorers. We're just the broadcasters. Don't send your hateful emails or phone calls to us. It's a hit in my book, Dylan. Two balls and no strikes. The 2-0 pitch is high pop-up shallow left field. Probably not going to be deep enough for the sack fly. Catch made by the left fielder, Campbell. No advancement, runners stay at the corners as Benson retired, but North Broward goes back to the top of their order and Clancy Marsh with two on and two out and a chance to continue to extend this lead. Runner on first will break. Pitch outside, they'll throw all the way through. Runner stays at third. It's a stolen base for the runner at first. That was Wyatt Moss. And Wyatt Moss, and it's second and third now with one out in the frame. Again, you got the infield in up the middle. Trying to keep this from getting away from him. That one sprayed foul first base side. It's 0-2. Can these North Broward Prep Eagles add more in this fifth? Ground ball to short. Runner will break. Now oh they're, they're going to have some running trouble here. There's two runners at third. They run at that runner. Now the runner's going to break for the plate. That run is going to score. The throw to third is in time. But the run is going to count at home for North Broward Prep. The umpire emphatically signaling that the run counts. So maybe they did that on purpose to try to get the run in. Either way, it's a fifth run of the fifth inning for the North Broward Prep Eagles. And it's 8-4 North Broward heading to the top of the sixth inning. North Broward now six outs away from a state championship as we're watching the Class 4A state title game on the NFHS Network. Everybody knows how good Louisiana food is. For us, it's a way of life. We call it Creole. Creole is the melting pot of cultures, 
music, and great food. Salt and pepper? No way. On whatever you cook or whatever you eat, use Tony Sachery's Creole Season. Trust me, I know Creole. And this is the real deal. Oh, yeah. Tony Sachery. Makes everything taste great. High school sports fans, relive your favorite moments. Just click the shopping cart below the video player and select DVD or digital copy to get yours today. A five-run bottom of the fifth thing as the North Broward Prep Eagles are closing in on their first state championship. And before we get going here in the top of the sixth inning, let's take a look at how that last inning ended. They get the out at first, but Thomas, if you see that as a coach, what are you telling your guys? How do you approach that play? Yeah, Connor Burks does it right running at the runner. But once you see that guy vacate third, then... He needs to become your primary focus, and you get him in the pickle because you can use as much time as you want to get that lead runner without it costing you, as as you saw there. You, you go after the guy between second and third, and now you, you're up against the clock. If he touches home before you, you tag him out, that run scores, and that's exactly what happened. That ball crushed into left center field, but it does not carry. The left fielder, Clancy Marsh, is over. Burks is retired for the first down of the inning. I would think they're your best bet, if it was me, is try to run basically to the third base bag with it. It forces the runner back, and then it's an easier throw than running towards the middle of the baseline to try to come home with it. Again, you're, you're, you're taught to sort of try to engage that runner, but in that situation, your number one priority had to be don't let the lead run score. Right. No. So I'm, if I'm the first baseman, I'm running. I see there's the, the runner on second's on third, and the runner on third is basically right there too. So what I'm doing is running behind the, the runner on second, which I know is going to force the runner on third to vacate. So I get behind him, and, as, and I've got my eye on the runner on third the whole time. Once he starts to vacate, then I go after him, get him in the pickle, and then all we got to do is play pitch and catch, and we're out of the inning without a run. Pitch in there for a strike. It's one and two, and that's also where your teammates, both on the field and in the dugout, have to be helped. You, they need to be on that runner at third to get a going, going, going call as the one-two is laced into left center. That ball will be caught in left field by Marsh. Marsh has gotten over there twice. He's made two nice plays in left, and there's two gone. As just like that, Burks and Salguero have been put down. Back to the top of the order goes Gavin Miller. But again, that's where your teammates, and I get that they're on the other side of the field, but your catcher as well needs to be full voice Home, 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 as soon as that guy breaks. If he deeks off the bag, you'll take that result of everybody being safe as the first pit is in there for a strike. In that situation, let's say your, your sort of top two is get the out at home, number one, or let everyone be and go to face another batter. But the 0-1 is in there for a strike, 0-2, but right now the way that Riley Luft is pitching, it might not make a difference whether... It's seven or eight on the board for North Broward. The 0-2 from Luft in the dirt for a ball. It's one and two. As Riley Luft may be four outs away from pitching North Broward to the state championship. One, two, up and away for a ball. It's deuces wild, two balls, two strikes, and two outs. It could be the, the second guy to come on in relief for North Broward during a win this weekend, right? Tejeda yeah, got it yesterday, right? 2-2, two, two, got him, strike three. Riley Luft has come out of the bullpen, and he's in line to be the winning pitcher in the state championship game. He's thrown three and two-thirds, five strikeouts, one hit allowed. We go to the bottom of the sixth. The Eagles look to add to their lead. They lead it 8-4 to four, as you're watching. The Class 4A State Championship game on the NFHS Network.
After two and a half innings, North Marion led this game 4-1. to one. Since then, seven unanswered runs from the North Broward Prep Eagles, and they now stand three outs away from a, the first state championship in school history as North Broward Prep started playing baseball Back in 1997, school has been open since 57. They started playing baseball in 97. And 24 years later, as that ball driven deep into center, it forces Garcia back. He makes the catch at cap height. One up, one down on one pitch for the reliever in Carson Smith. North Broward Prep. The comeback kids of this tournament. And Yoel Tejeda, a big reason why. He takes a strike. It's 0-1. The, the, the savior yesterday, right, came on and threw five plus. I'm not sure you know better than me. Seven innings, seven innings <laughs> in the win yesterday. Hunsberger threw the first two as he laces another one into right center. And Garcia almost overran that ball, but he's there to make the catch. North Broward Prep, third trip to the Final Four in school history. They were here in 11 over in Port St. Lucie. They were over at JetBlue Park in 14. Both of those times they would fall in the Final Four. This year they finally get to the title game in dramatic fashion last night. And now they are three outs away from finally wearing the crown in 4A as a pitch taken for a strike. It's 0-1 to Josh Steidel. And you got the feeling that knowing that they fell behind 5-0 last night that they were not going to give up here tonight. And they so recent in their minds that they did it. And probably mentally they're saying we did it against tougher pitching yesterday too. So, you know, we got this. Well, and we talked about it as the 2-0 is tapped foul, 2-1. and one. We talked about it when North Marion went up 4-1 to one, that North Marion knew they were going to have to bury North Broward, Broward Prep to feel any kind of comfort in this game. They know that no lead is safe, that five runs disappear tonight, that it, even if the lead had gone to six tonight, it would have been erased. As seven unanswered for North Broward, 1-2 misses, it's 2-2. Two and two. You knew that no lead was safe against North Broward. This is a team that has been playing high leverage baseball for over a month. You know, they were a team that was trailing in their district championship game, would have had to been complete road warriors to get here, and even then they had to pull off a couple of road wins to get here anyway, as the 2-2 misses up and away to fill the count at 3-2 and two is this North Broward prep team. If you look at the road they took to get here, they had to go to Plantation American Heritage, which is a massive state power as the 3-2 misses the zone ball four. And the base and they, there's a runner on with two outs as the walk drawn by Steidel to bring up Ty Richmond. They had to go to American Heritage. They had to beat Modern Lakes Academy. They had to beat Somerset Academy, both in extra innings in this tournament. Quite a ride, huh? They were on the ropes multiple times and then down 5 nothing last night to Dunedin as the pitch fouled off to the screen. It's 0-1. Just going back to the first inning, them being able to get out of that only giving up the two runs with uh, not starting that the night off the, the way they certainly had planned. We mentioned it at the time. First two men aboard for, for Derek Fabian, the offensive MVP of the state, and they were able to get him out, and that went a long way towards holding holding him to two runs as base is swiped here. Good jump and a stolen base for Josh Steidel. He stands on second here in the top, bottom half of inning number six. It's 8-4 North Broward prep over North Marion as the Eagles are on the doorstep of a state championship for the first time in school history. The 1-1 one -one to Richmond popped up right side. First base, second base battling. First base is there. Making the catch is Connor Burks. So we go to the seventh inning. 
North Marion needs to be the team that comes back now. They need four in the top of the seven to prevent the North Broward Prep Eagles from celebrating a state championship. We'll find out if they can do it in the seventh inning when we come back as you're watching the Class 4A state championship game on the NFHS Network. Everybody knows how good Louisiana food is. For us, it's a way of life. We call it Creole. Creole is the melting pot of cultures, music, and great food. Salt and pepper? No way. On whatever you cook or whatever you eat, use Tony Sachery's Creole season. Trust me, I know Creole. And this is the real deal. Oh, yeah. Tony Sachery. Makes everything taste great. Today's game is also available for all subscribers via the NFHS Network Live mobile app for Apple and Android devices. Download the app from the Apple App Store or Google Play Store today to start watching live games wherever you are. And to purchase a DVD keepsake of today's event, click on the blue Get the DVD button directly under your event video player or click on the Buy a DVD button on the top right-hand corner of the NFHS Network website. You can also click the digital copy button under the event video player to download a digital copy of the event right to your computer as the North Broward Prep Eagles on the doorstep of their first state championship. They are three outs away as what an outing in relief with the pitching not being what they wanted from Gomberg. Riley Luff, three and two thirds, five strikeouts, just one hit allowed as he's ahead, no balls and a strike. To start the seventh inning, it's now one and one as it'll be. The heart of the order, two, three, four, Garcia, Fabian, Walton to try to jumpstart a rally for North Marion. And if all three of those guys can reach, you got Wyatt Campbell hitting for the cycle. <laughs> and that cycle would prove to be pretty big if he can homer with a couple of guys on base and make this interesting as North Broward prep, seven unanswered runs. The one, one is fouled off. It's one and two. North Broward Prep out of Coconut Creek. Looking for that first title in their third trip to the Final Four in the last decade. They've never gotten to the title game until tonight. And they are three outs away from cashing in. The one, two in the dirt for a ball. It's two and two, but we've seen the unpredictable happen in this tournament. You don't get to dogpile until you record that 21st out. And there are some pop, there is pop in the bats here for North Marion that can get them back in this game in a hurry. They had a little practice dogpile last night winning in style. Hit by pitch. Eli Garcia, the Ave Maria commit, has been hit by a pitch up and in and he will stand on first with nobody out and here comes Derek Fabian. Fabian has been 0 for 3 tonight with a strikeout. But wouldn't it be a big time for Fabian to come up with his biggest hit of the night, his biggest hit of the season to keep things going for North Marion. Fabian clubs one foul down the left field line. That was well struck into the corner but foul. Just a little in front of that. You can see the power from Fabian. Just trying to get yourself on base any way you can. Easiest way for him probably to swing it. No balls and a strike. The 0-1 is in there again. And the count is 0-2 on Derek Fabian. Riley Luff got him with the K. On the change up back in the fourth inside corner, did a real nice job. Fell behind 3 1 in that count. Caught the corner for a, with a curveball for strike two and then got him. Fabian with a high fly ball into left. Clancy Marsh comes in. Fabian with a 
uppercut swing. He wanted to drive that ball into the next zip code, but Marsh makes the play. And now North Broward Prep could be as close as one pitch away. With a runner on first, a double play ball could win this thing for North Broward. But you've got Jacob Walton, Wyatt Campbell, the next two hitters for North Marion. They both can swing it to try to get the tying run to the plate for the Colts. First pitch to Walton. Down Broadway for a strike, 0-1. No balls and a strike. Riley Luft looking to finish off a gem. His 0-1 popped up right side. Racing in that direction is the first baseman in Steidel, but it's out of his reach, and it's 0-2. And and Luft just, <laughs> Riley just continues to keep these hitters off balance, off speed there, kind of looping, slurve, <laughs> curve ball, and just tough to square up. 0-2, blooper into right. There is Kachemise. He makes the grab, and the North Broward Prep Eagles are now one out away from winning the state title in Class 4A. The fans start to move in the direction of the front row to capture this moment, but Wyatt Campbell, the last thing in the world he wants is to be the final out as good as he's played in this tournament. He's three for three with three RBIs as he will try to get his fourth hit of the game. And it doesn't, might not change the outcome, but a homer would give him the cycle in this state championship game. First pitch to Wyatt Campbell. Inside half for a strike. It's 0-1 from Riley Loft. Again, used the off speed to get ahead and She's just had uh, been impressive commanding every pitch she throws. The 0-1 is up over the screen, and North Broward Prep is one strike away from a state championship here in Class 4A. No balls and two strikes is your count on Wyatt Campbell. Riley Luff looking for strikeout number six to give North Broward Prep the title. Luft comes set from the stretch. The 0-2 popped up first base side. It's out of play and we do it again. It stays, no balls and two strikes. Count 0-2. Riley Luft has been brilliant out of the pen. He's the winning pitcher if he can get the final out. No balls and two strikes. Luft's 0-2 is a fly ball. It will be playable in the infield. Kobe Benson makes the catch. And North Broward Prep, the comeback kids from Coconut Creek, do it one more time. And North Broward Prep are the Class 4A state champions. Down by five in the semis, down by three in the finals. North Broward Prep pulls off the improbable. They come back on both nights, and the Eagles of North Broward Prep are your state champions. What incredible resilience for this team out of the East Coast. Dead to rights against Dunedin, down 4-1 tonight. They never quit, they never back down, and they are the 4A champions. What a run for North Broward. They played every game in the playoffs, a one-run game until tonight, as they knock off a game North Marion Colts team by a final score of eight to four as we take a look at our Academy Sports and Outdoor Championship Game Player of the Game, Dylan Runsdorf. A couple of hits, three RBIs. He was phenomenal behind the plate and he is our Academy Sports and Outdoor Player of the Game as North Broward Prep celebrates 
with their fans that have made the trip. And they, Thomas, are your 4A state champions. And, and they deserve it. They absolutely do. Just, I mean, you, you said it well. Just comeback effort, the comeback kids. <laughs> and there's your player of the game. And just quality at bats from him all tournament. Drove in the first run today with the RBI and, and drives in two more big ones late with uh, in the fifth inning there with that great at bat foul. Fouled off three or four pitches, I think, and with two strikes to, to extend that. Then with the infield in, gets it past the third baseman, opens that game, opens it up to a, a three run lead there. It was just a one run ball game at the time. And you know, behind the plate yesterday, he's. You know he's still, and it's not as if it, it was a breeze. It's not like either starter came out and and really pitched the way they wanted to. So he had to deal with a lot of different arms out of the bullpen, different strategies, thing you know, ad adapting on the fly, and uh, well deserving of our Academy Sports Player of the the game, and and quite possibly the the MVP uh, for the team this this weekend. And you feel for those boys in red, the North Marion Colts. They make history yesterday, throwing a combined no-hitter in the state semifinals. But one bad inning takes them down today. They outscored for five of the six innings in this game. They outscored the North Broward Prep Eagles, but that five spot in the bottom of the fifth inning proves to be the difference as North Broward Prep celebrates their first state championship in baseball in program history. It is an unmatched feeling in high school athletics to be state champions, to hoist that trophy, get those gold medals around your neck. And for North Marion, it hurts right now. You want to be on the other side. It, it, it is painful to be dogpiled on. But for the North Marion Colts, they are have everything to hold their heads up high about and the season they had and what they were able to do this season and get to the state championship game for the first time in school history. Yeah, and I mean, what probably makes it hurt a little bit more is they had the lead 4-1 here in the third inning, and you're counting, I mean, they're counting outs. I mean, you, you mentioned on the broadcast, right? They're 12 outs away, and... Um, they were or nine so, outs away. Yeah, nine outs away. I mean, geez. And so, I mean, to... They definitely, it was on their minds. They, they could taste it, and, um, you know, that, that certainly makes it makes it hurt a little bit more. But I guarantee you, down the road, they'll, they'll come back. Come, You know, the seniors will come back to the high school. They'll they'll walk in to the gym or wherever the, the trophies go, and uh, they'll see it, and they'll think of the memories of the season as opposed to kind of the, the pain they're going through right now. And, you know, they'll remember the relationships and the ride and, you know, the heroic wins that got them here. And uh, it's it's just the way it goes. They're, they're, they're hurting today, but, uh, you know, there'll, there'll be a lot of good memories that, that come out when, when they see those, those trophies years from now. North Broward Prep, an 8-4 winner in the Class 4A state championship game. As we finish up on the trophy presentation, the medal presentation, Ryan, you got one more championship game tomorrow here on the NFHS Network. John Vitas will have the call as it will be the Mosley Dolphins taking on the Mavericks of Archbishop McCarthy, north versus south. Mosley up in North Florida, Archbishop McCarthy over in Southwest Ranches on the East Coast. They battle for the 5A title tomorrow here in Fort Myers to wrap up our stay at the FHSAA Finals. But back-to-back, -back, three run-plus comebacks for the North Broward Prep Eagles. Down 5 nothing after an inning and a half yesterday. Down 4-1 after three, after uh, two and a half innings today. And even down 4-3 after four. But they found a way to win yet again. And they will momentarily get to hoist the state championship trophy for the first time in their school's history. As the coaches start to get their medals, coaches and managers all part of this run as North Marion 
will be presented. Their senior class will come and get that state runner-up trophy as their fans and the North Broward fans together applaud the effort of a very, very, very good North Marion baseball team. Derek Fabian, he's going to follow in his brother's footsteps and be an impact player at Florida. Wyatt Campbell's going to make some noise in the A-Sun for Lipscomb. And guys up and down that North Marion lineup are going to be some of them back next year to make another run back to the Final Four where quite a few of them will go and play some high-level college baseball. But on the other side of the field, the North Broward Prep Eagles. The Cardiac Kids <laughs> win one run game after one run game and then win the state championship by coming back from a three run deficit. The trophy is in the air. The seniors have it in their hands and you know they'll pass it off to the rest of their teammates here in the next few moments. But the North Broward Prep Eagles are the Class 4A state champions Everybody gets their hand on the trophy now. North Broward Prep takes a state title back to Coconut Creek as they beat the Colts of North Marion by a final score of 8-4. to four. We thank, as we wrap up our coverage between me and Thomas of the FHSA Finals, again, one game again tomorrow. We thank all of our crews, producers, cameramen, everybody that's been a part of the broadcast here in Fort Myers. For our broadcast partner, Thomas Benedetto. I'm Ryan Murphy saying the North Broward Prep Eagles are the Class 4A 